Okay, so one of the things that we introduced is for people that were switching from other programs, they often liked this concept of VCA linking. All right. I've, I've only had a couple people actually tell me why they needed VCA linking, really, as opposed to kind of, so we have, we have several different styles of linking that we've introduced. So one of them I could do is if I select a number of tracks on my mixer, I can come here and enable quick link. And this is also just command shift or uh, shift alt. And then, so once I have quick link enabled, I could just link all those channels that easily. And then if I hold down uh, just my alt key, I can override one channel. So I say, oh, that needs to be a little louder now. So that's what quick link allows you to do. Now also we said, wouldn't it be cool if we could have a permanent link? So here, if I click on the link button in the top of the mixer, we could actually choose what elements are linked. So let's say I have a bunch of background vocals. I could say, I want all the background vocals, the volume and maybe the sends and, and EQs because it's the same singer. Maybe when I adjust the EQ on one, I want the 10 tracks of the same singer with the background vocals. I want that same EQ and send level sent to all of them. Now, new in Cubase 8 is before we could call these cleverly link one, link two, link three, link four. So you could actually now give it a name just like that. So you can say, this is my drum link. This is whatever link. And that works really cool. Now, if you have existing automation, it could be a little tricky because this is like a moving the fader physically when, we're, when we have these channels linked like this. But let's say if I have this project and I'm playing and I have uh, some of my existing automation here. Let me just make sure we're on our right monitors here. You're listening to the headphones. Mm -hmm. Oh, okay. So if I come here and we have existing automation going on in our project, this gets tricky now with linking. So let's say I have some automation here at the beginning. Now one of the greatest features of Cubase I love is this trick where you can just take your mouse in, in the timeline here, hold the mouse down and just zoom right down to the sample level. You know, that saves so much time. So let's say I have existing kind of automation going on here. So I have tracks going up and tracks going down. Now what I can do is I'm going to select these tracks, right click, and a very requested feature was add VCA fader to the selected channels. So now I could come here and I could automate this VCA fader. And as I do this, I could move this VCA fader. It's going to adjust the volume of all those different channels while still like there, as I'm going down, you can still see the tracks going up. And as I bring it up, tracks are still going down. Now the VCA, some people go, oh, doesn't a group track do that? Yes, it does. But the group track actually sums the audio information of that particular channel. So if I drop the fader, that could screw up the balance between the actual you know, audio channel and the effect send. So the VCA doesn't do that. Now, if, now when I go to my track, I could actually see that I have, in essence, two different automation values here. <clears throat> so as I do this, uh, if I wanted to coalesce those two, all I need to do is go directly into my mixer and go to my VCA fader and say combine the automation of the VCA and the link channels. And now it's coalesced those. But you could also do something kind of even a little more interesting. So let's say I want to, uh, we'll blow out our VCA group here and we'll come to, and even if I get rid of it, we can still maintain the automation link and we'll unlink these channels. So let's say I want to take my kick drums, I'll right click, add VCA to selected tracks. I want to take my snares, We'll create a VCA fader to those tracks. Uh, let's take my toms, and let's say my overheads, uh, 
And now I want to do something clever. So I'm going to take my different VCA faders themselves and add them to their own VCA fader. So now I could control just my toms or if I wanted to control everything or just my kicks. So, so very, very powerful for that. Now, one of the things that we also see a lot of people doing is where we could do like parallel processing. And this is kind of, a, it's an old engineering technique. It's kind of, it's often called New York compression where you kind of have parallel like groups. And one of the groups is like really squashed and compressed and the other one isn't. And you kind of find the sweet spot between those. It was actually kind of developed by some of the Motown mastering engineers. Uh, one of the guys that kind of developed it, you know, you listen to early Motown stuff, you're like, wow, whatever volume, I could hear the bass and the vocals, clear as day. You know, super soft, super loud, sounds great. So now we have this functionality where you can say, we have what we call direct routing. So uh, in here, I could say, I want to send all my drums to, you know, a parallel group or in addition to my drum group without having to actually take all of my different sends to do that. And what's kind of interesting is like, let's say you have a lead vocal, you could actually kind of automate your routing here. So when I go to automate something, I can say, okay, let, I just want to take off those particular drums out of the parallel bus. So at this point you could choose to, and as we do this, it'll just completely automate all of the routing for you. So you can say, okay, during the chorus, I want parallel compression on the voice, but not during the verse. So you could send it up to eight different destinations. So you don't have to use your aux sense for that. You could use your aux sense for something clever like effects. And you could use your routing for routing. You can use your inserts for inserts. You could use your channel strip for all of your typical functions. Now, something else that we added was we said, okay, we want to, we have kind of a very cool meter bridge. And some of my like really neat engineer friends in Nashville are just great, like Gary Pachosa and Michael Wagner. You know, Gary Pachosa does like Allison Krauss records, and like you know, is probably the most highly sought after acoustic recording guy. You know, he has like 15 Grammys or something ridiculous like that. And Michael Wagner, and they're both really into like doing this whole concept where they want to make the perfect meter colors. You know, so you could say, you know, you, you know, and one of the things is Cubase is highly configurable. So if you wanted to come here to preferences, you could actually, one is you could, you know, create your own keyboard shortcuts for every single function. But if you wanted to, you could also just come here and, you know, change the meter colors if you want. So minus 6 dB, it turns red. Minus 12 dB, it turns this color. But meters, and we saw that we have the extensive metering in our, project in our media in our uh, control room rather but meters are great at showing you at what just happened what about if you want to see meters of what's going to happen so we could actually switch the meter type here to wave and as we do this you can now see all the audio channels and see the waveform in the meter and you can say man is there anything on this track what, what's going on with this track it's like is something gonna happen? So you can just kind of watch it and say, oh, okay, uh, coming up, you know, so you can just kind of see exactly all the different components right there. So high on the cool looking factor, that's important. Mm -hmm.